Welcome to Amusement Sparks, the theme park design show. This is season three. It's so good to be back. I took, you know, a leave of absence there. It was quite a long time. I think it was three months. And, uh, yeah, it felt pretty crazy from someone who's used to doing, pretty much working on a podcast constantly to taking like a big old break. Um, luckily though, I've been working on other stuff. You know, there's a bunch of Amusement Sparks videos on YouTube now. That's very exciting. All of season one and season two. But here we are, season three. Oh my gosh, the present, the time is finally here. So happy to be here. <sighs> okay. Anyway, let's get going. Um, off to a very smooth start here. This is uh, the first episode of Season 3, which we actually already recorded, and we kind of lost it. But hey, we're, we're here to do it again. We really had fun recording the episode. We really like working together, so here we are. This episode is featuring my guest slash Fancy Bat brother, Ben <laughs> Relaford. Fancy Bat brother... I like the idea of our, our podcast collaboration being a fraternity of sorts. Well, I mean, two of the three members are, are like legally brothers, so you know, I thought I could just <laughs> squeeze in there. I, I never really thought of Zane and I as legal brothers, <laughs> but I guess it's true. <laughs> it's and not you, brothers in quotation marks. You, it's you like... never talk to your mom and as like, and you refer to her as your like legal mother, right? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> wow, well, like, the said. only time you you point out that something is legal is when people are skeptical whether it's legal. True, or when you're in a lawsuit kind of situation yeah sure i'll have my mom uh, write up the adoption papers <laughs> all right so it is time for our warm-up this is where i take a list of random toy related adjectives and nouns and pair them we call it the toy nato let's see we'll just do some random stuff here do some random stuff. yeah random stuff so what has come up here is a collectible car track collectible car track yeah like a car track like i don't know maybe something like a hot wheels track kind of thing where some but of them just are the track not the car just the track i mean getting getting little cars is easy you can buy those anywhere but collectible track pieces now that's <laughs> <laughs> i mean like the only thing that i can think of this is like uh the kind of progression of like transportation system throughout the ages you know huh. kind of having like a um kind of kind of having a a living like antique um, like menagerie of the ways in which our roads have progressed throughout the years. That could work. Are you seeing them as things that can combine together? Like you can link two of them together and drive your car from one to the next? Well, I, I was thinking that these would be kind of miniatures. Mm -hmm. Like um, little vignettes? Ma yeah, and, and you know, I think I am going to throw the little, uh, the, the car back into the mix. So, sure. you know, have like, um, have like a, a a bunch of train tracks like railroads or something and you can have that cool like uh what, what are those things that pump up and down on the railroads that you yeah. use, like in oh brother where are that i totally know what you're talking about but i have no clue what that's called it, it runs yeah. on a train tracks it's a um, some kind of hand look up audience pumping uh train it, thing yeah it's something that people with beards use yeah <laughs> um so like like maybe have one of those tracks and that is the car for that track so, like, it is pretty much just Hot Wheels, but it is, like, tuned to different kinds of tracks. Yeah. I like the that a lot. car and track alike. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So each each one comes with a vehicle that matches it, or are the the vehicles randomly mixed in there? Hmm. That's mm. interesting. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know. Because if you I... get, like, you know, a Ferrari with um, a train track, it's going to be like, this is strange. Why is this happening to me? I also kind of dig a Ferrari with a train track, but I think I might be the odd man out on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, think you, cool. I think it would have to come with the car. I think yeah. it would just be... It would make more you don't, sense. You don't, you don't know what kind of track you're going to get. Mm -hmm. It's a different themed track, and it has a different... It doesn't even have to be... You know, it doesn't have to be something that actually existed. It right. can be like like a, like a space future. monorail. Yeah. And then you have a space monorail that looks like a space monorail, which I'm going to do the good... <laughs> Uh, storytelling thing and leave that to the imagination of the listener thank you i, I was gonna ask um <laughs> the, i just thought of another idea what if we did this but with like a roller coaster type of thing so there's like a ride vehicle and a segment of a roller coaster track that's a lot more complex though than just like a hot wheels thing which is um so light and flexible that you can make it do a loop and it'll be totally fine but like yeah so maybe this doesn't work as well Maybe the tracks connect together to create one. Like, maybe the mm -hmm. entire set is a full-length track that if you put your little car at the top of it, it'll go through the whole thing like a Rube Goldberg machine. Wow. But uh, you need all the tracks to connect in order to do it. That sounds really cool. So 
um, they'd be at a, they're more like uh, physically like structural than a traditional Hot Wheels track, which is totally like flexible and bendable. But this is already mm-hmm. like no, it goes down at a thirty degree angle and then it like flattens out at the bottom. Yeah, it'd be like a it's sort of like a uh, pipe dream. What's pipe dream? Oh, that's like a it's like a popular online game um that was uh or maybe it was just maybe it wasn't online. I can't remember where it was, <laughs> but it's the thing that you have to do in BioShock in order to make the machines listen to oh, you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used and to I, play that as a card game when I was young. That's oh, fun. yeah, yeah. yeah. It seems like it'd be a pretty good card game as well. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's yeah. it's just like that kind of thing. There's a specific sequence kind of thing they need to go and it's a little bit puzzle-like where you can kind of rearrange them, but there's one correct path maybe that that makes them makes it go yeah it, it's i always i always really appreciate that game it's like a, a risk versus reward like <laughs> how much do you look toward the end to figure out what you're going to need to do how much do you look toward the beginning to make sure you don't fail right away mm-hmm, mm-hmm. cool that sounds fun uh <laughs> are you ready for a new pair let's do it all right oh oh man i am excited about this one this is a glitter digital pet Two of my favorite things in the world. Huh. Well, <laughs> yeah. There's a couple different ways we can think about this. Wait, <laughs> digital pets are your two of your favorite things in the world? Are glitter and digital pets. Yes, I am obsessed Not with... pets and digital glitter? Uh, ooh. Digital ooh. glitter I've only experienced a few times, and it was really good. Um, <laughs> it was very shiny. <laughs> so digital pets, in my mind, are still, like, very basic, simplistic, uh, like, 64 by 64 grid. Like, uh, you know, original... Digimon or whatever. Those might have even been yeah. 16 pixels. Yeah, you flip it onto your belt loop and, and he levels up while you're walking. Yeah, and they're they're very basic graphics. Super simplistic, just black uh, LCD screen. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe you could do incorporate glitter in the display somehow, where instead of just being black, there's like a layer of of like a foil that it kind of shines the light through it or somehow make that happen, where instead of seeing you know these black pixels, they are pixels of the foil that you can see or of the glitter that you can see well that does that sounds like just a kind of an innovative uh visual design choice it doesn't really get to the digital pet aspect of true it. here's what i think let's hear right? it. Uh, the the idea here is that it is like uh you know a digital pet thing but the way i'm seeing it is that the glitter is the pet and it's kind of like this amorphous like ditto type of character oh. that you can train and make it take different forms <laughs> And it's the only thing that looks like glitter, so it's like yeah. it makes it look really special on the screen. It's just like this kind of shiny, amorphous thing that you can train to do tricks. Like that's fascinating. you know, it talks to you by like forming words out with its body, or put a big question mark if it doesn't understand what's going on, or something like that. That is awesome. Yeah, yeah. that sounds super cool. Um, <laughs> so it's almost like a flubber kind of thing, like this it's, little rascal. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that uh, Ditto would fall in love with Flubber or vice versa? <laughs> I know they could form an egg pair for sure. They could definitely mate. Isn't it so weird how glitter has kind of become like, like a like, sort of uh, demasculinified or whatever? I don't know. It's pretty girly. Um, the school I work at is is very uh, very gay and very LGBTQ plus friendly. So no one's made fun of me for it. But like my lunch bag, my wallet, a lot of my uh, folders, they're, they're like very um, iridescent and like very shiny. And like there's a lot of pinks in there. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> but I've never got beat up for it, so uh, it's great. <laughs> that glitter digital pet interpretation is way more interesting than just an old school digital pet with a layer of glitter in it. It's like the thing about the tornado is that you have to incorporate both parts, and absolutely. that's the only way I could think to do it. Well done, I, and and that is a lesson I'm still learning. Uh, what, uh, what would the name of your digital pet be? Your glitter lit, glitter glit chiller. Glitter, glitter, pet. Glitical. Um, yeah, probably yeah. not that. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> that makes um, sense. Something about like living glitter. Uh, the my glitter friend. <laughs> like sparkles. Sparkles. That's easy. That's a good nickname for it. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I mean, in a modern era, I feel like everything has to be like connected and have to have like a in an, an iPhone app version of it, and it's like I don't really want to do that that's not as fun hmm. no you want to train it on your own you don't want it to be yeah you don't want it to be in your phone with all of your texts and all your other crap yeah um, where you can infect everything with glitter <laughs> that would be really fun though if it can spread. all your text messages look just look like glitter <laughs> it affects your other apps digital pet at all yeah let's make this um in just an app that is a trojan uh that just covers <laughs> everything in glitter 
<laughs> yeah, all my my apps run fine. My uh, you know, my speeds are faster than ever, but uh, everything's glittering. <laughs> I can't get it to stop. We are here to discuss Mega Man and yes. what the a theme park based on that character and that world would be like. So let's let's get into it. Great. I'm currently wearing my uh, Proto Men T-shirt. Nice. Light up the night, and also Joe riding a motorcycle. <laughs> This is a band that, that we both love, and you guys should definitely look up, even if you don't really like Mega Man. It's just awesome music, and, and concept albums in general are, are fantastic. Yeah. Did you see that they uh, recently came out with a third album? No. Yeah. I've been wow. listening to it all morning. as I like. I went to YouTube <gasps> to kind of fire up the old album to like just kind of put myself in the right mind frame and saw that there were singles that came out from, from Act 3. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know what I'm doing this afternoon. That yep. is amazing. Yep. Yeah, but I don't know what it is about Mega Man that just kind of that, that that just kind of got me right at the right age. I mean, clearly they are fantastic games. I think the first one I played was actually Mega Man X, and that one, hmm. you know, it has kind of passed into legend as a high point of platforming and game design, especially. Uh, yeah. But more than that, like the the, the Mega Man story is so iconic and influential to me because it is so like despite being for children explicitly for kids it is it bespeaks a tragic universe wherein humanity has lost a war and that's it was just such a different idea is that the robot the robots have won this is post skynet times and we're putting our hopes in something that is a like the efficiency of it is robotic, but the morality of it is human. Uh, the ability of a robot to make human decisions and adapt. It's, it's so interesting having those very human ideals instilled in a machine. Yeah. It's a very like classic sci-fi kind of story. It's like a very powerful story. And if you think about the flavor of Mega Man, yeah, sure. You're running around and jumping and shooting stuff. It's, it's a video game that anyone could play. But it's got so much more flavor and so much more background than, like, say, Mario, for example, which does have a lot of flavor, but it's just this kooky world. Whereas... Yeah, it, it doesn't really have a lot of depth to that world. Yeah, and there's not much of a story there. Whereas, you know, I, Mega I mean, Man... scholars maintain that they <laughs> don't know precisely the reasons that a giant turtle is trying to kidnap a princess. Yeah, there's some wild stuff going on in that universe. I would say Mario's very cartoony, and then, like, Mega Man maybe is very anime, almost. Like, it's a lot more dark. Well, Mario sounds like he was designed from, like, a Mad Libs game, right? <laughs> He's like an Italian plumber with a big mustache that can jump good, and his mm -hmm. main rival's a giant turtle in a clown copter car, and, yeah. they, and everything is a mushroom or a chestnut, and... Everything has eyes on it, and the bricks are sometimes enemies, or were turned into enemies, or... It's so silly. It is very silly, but if you say, okay, all that craziness, except everything's a robot, and it's the future, <laughs> suddenly, it kind of makes more sense. You know, it's it's less Alice in Wonderland. It's, it's a lot more believable, because it is so far in the future, where it's like, yeah, maybe they do have all these robotic enemies flying around everywhere, and, like, these floating platforms and saws going all over the place. I don't know. Maybe they do. What I like about Mega Man so much is that the story of it is very methodical. Like, I think that it was all designed, at, you know, for the first few iterations at, to be kind of very easily contained and have a real a real message and theme to it. Like, mm -hmm. humanity has sold, like, this one guy has sold out all of humanity in order to become king of the new world. The technology mm -hmm. has exceeded beyond our grasp we only have this one chance to succeed it's it's like kind of this very romantic story um romantic in like the aggrandizing our own history and culture sort of way <laughs> right right not like a, a picnic at sunset kind of thing but at the same time it's also a really cool um it, it's it's also a very whimsical presentation like all of the robots are ridiculous and have faces that are like so cartoony like i love that one log cutter robot in Mega Man X. He's like this lumberjack robot who stands near like this pylon of ever replicating like wood disc robots and just fires them at you. Wow. It sounds like he's got got it made. Like uh you know, if you like chopping down trees then He's doing what he loves. <laughs> oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah. There are so many interesting robots like that um where they they're designed for a purpose and then 
it's like they designed the robot to look like something that would enjoy that purpose. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's not like... Yeah, no, they're all enjoying their, their programming, so yeah. to speak. Like, the very first one you encounter in Mega Man X is just, like, a wheel with spikes on it rolling near you, and he's got, like, this menacing little face, like, oh, I'm gonna get you. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of character and a lot of soul in these robots. It's pretty cool. Another thing that I think a lot of people love about Mega Man, or why it's so influential on, on individuals, is that the story is kind of minimal in the first few games. Like, there is a flavor for it, but it's not explicitly given to you. So you kind of get to fill in the cracks and, like, create your own narrative, you know, connecting point A to point B. Mega Man is one of those strange franchises where, regardless of what continuity I'm looking at, it all kind of works. Mm -hmm. Like, if you look at the uh, cartoon for Mega Man, like, I don't particularly care for Mega Man's personality on that, but... You know, it's set in a universe where robots should be our helpers, but they got all skynetted, and now we're just depending on Mega to fix everything. He's the only one who can do it. He's more powerful than everyone else, but his real strength lies in his ability to adapt and to think. Yes, and I think that's uh, one of the real strengths of the games themselves as well, is that the character kind of evolves and grows in more of a way than just eating a mushroom and getting taller. It's like... (laughs) And I mean, I know that Mario does have his own power-ups as well, uh, but Mega Man, once he has defeated one of the, the boss characters, he can kind of take their weapon, and then he has more abilities going forward. So it, it is a lot about progression and about um, learning. It's a very empowering kind of gameplay, and it rewards your ability to critically think about your environment. Like, it's very puzzle-oriented shoot 'em up Yeah, and also it's it's not that you have to get this key to go through that door. It's it's a little bit more problem solving and stuff because you can go through the game in whatever order you want to. When you first start the game, it shows you um, a series of bosses, but they're not linear. You can go in whatever order through these levels you want. So, mm-hmm. you know, maybe you get one weapon and you can use that weapon to take down any of the other villains. It just might be really hard. Like there's a maybe an easiest way to do it to play it progress through the game and then there's a more challenging way if you go through and take the weapon that's not that effective and then try to complete the rest of the game with that it's it's kind of cool it allows for more decision making and more uh freedom and exploration i think than most video games which have a similar progression mechanic park last time and and one of the main uh things that i recall from that was was our use of mega man has like a gun arm a mega buster so the way that i wanted to set up the theme park the way that we kind of tried to do it last time was that there would be essentially this central hub you can go in eight different directions corresponding to the eight robot masters that you uh can fight in all of the games except for the first one and you essentially have a laser tag course from beginning to end where, you know, you have an X buster on your arm and you've got a headset like a visor so that you can see computer generated images on your visor that you can shoot with your, with your X buster. You know, those are all synced up, but only you can see them. If you're not wearing a helmet, you can't see the enemies. Yeah. So it's basically an AR augmented reality kind of thing. And this allows for a lot more freedom as well. So let's say you're on this one course. Um, if you're a really high level player, there's going to be enemies going every which way, and it's going to be really chaotic and wild. Whereas if it's your first time to the park, you know, maybe you'll see one enemy just kind of leisurely going across as it's more of like a tutorial. So it's very flexible. So this is like a very, you can personalize your gaming experience to your level of skill and your familiarity with the park. So, you know, if you, if you show up at the beginning of the park, you can choose your skill level. You can be a rush, you can be a roll, you can be a mega, you can be a proto man. That's the, that's the kind of the expert level. I think, I think it's clear to say that proto man is the coolest one. Oh, of course. So you, you select your difficulty thing when you come into the park. And then if you're, you know, if you're, if you're just starting out, but you kind of want to play with it a little bit, you can go through these levels with the easily difficulty selector, and there will be fewer enemies, they'll be slower moving, they won't shoot at you as much, and it'll it'll be kind of a more leisurely theme park experience. 
But if you want to, you can go through as an expert player and, you know, because it's an AR thing, you'll have more enemies to shoot at, you'll be taking more damage from hits. So this is like a thing that two people can go through side by side and have a very different experience. Yeah, absolutely. And and even if you're with a, you know, a group, like let's say you're with your family, you know, each person's going to have their own skill level and their own desires for what they want to do in each each section. And we keep talking about this each section kind of thing, but we've we kind of designed like different lanes or different courses. Well, stages. Let's call them what they are. Let's call it spade a spade. Let's call it stage a stage. Oh, stage a stage. <laughs> <laughs> so for those who don't know Mega Man, you have oh you go pick a stage. You're like oh Frog Man, okay, and then you go to kind of a frog themed stage. There's a bunch of frog robots that you have to shoot. You're traversing through water. Maybe there's a mini boss that's an octopus. You know, like it's all very thematically linked, and that really kind of gives a lot of the flavor to the game. I want that to also happen here. So let's do Frogman. Let's just say Frogman is the first one. Sure. Sounds good. Let's go through this stage. So you start off, you've got your Mega Buster. Maybe you're with a partner, maybe not. Maybe it's a two-player option. That's totally mm-hmm. fine. You guys share, like, one set of difficulty, so you guys have to kind of coordinate um, going through it and fighting all the enemies. Let's, let's discuss uh, what kind of frog-themed hazards would be there. Um, maybe you're moving through the water. Of course, you can't do water, but maybe you just move slower a little bit because you can't move very fast in the water. I'm thinking that you have like your boots are like magnetized to the floor to some degree. Whoa! And that and in that way you can kind of simulate how easy it is to traverse. I like that. You could also um, like let's say there's a river area crossing, you know, going across, and so you kind of have to jump down into this kind of river area, and there's not actually water there, but in your you know your visor you see the water there and potentially like you said it could be magnets or it could also be like a treadmill kind of thing so it's like yeah. it just takes you longer to get across it yeah but basically giving that feeling of like this isn't just a hallway that i'm walking down but it's it's very diverse and it's like you're actually going through a forest yeah and and the great thing about this is that it, you can reskin this kind of at any moment because it's all just like, if you were to take the visor off, it would presumably just, like, look like a construction site with a bunch of metal and, and, and obstacles and stuff. Be like a military training facility of sorts. Yeah, like, it's basically an obstacle course. Like, so it, it almost feels like a Mega Man training facility of sorts. And so for the most part, are you picturing these as being just, like, long uh, corridors kind of going in a straight line, like a straight path? Or are they going to be winding like a maze? Let's let's Google Maps this for a second. Let's take a top-down view. Uh, <laughs> sure. if, if we're looking at, like, the central hub and it goes out in eight directions, um, more on that in a little bit. But, you know, as you go farther from the hub, it can become less linear, right? Because you have more surface area to kind of deal with right the beginning part all has to be pretty straight i like that yeah you start off in one corridor and then there's like branching pathways where like you can choose to go behind the boss which clearly has some more spike hazards or you can choose the way that goes down but now you're going to be traversing through water you can maybe see with your vr what the hazards are likely to be on either path and i like the idea of adjusting even just that knowledge to the players um you know their own level so if it's like a beginner player maybe it shows you like an overview like a the camera flies through the whole rest of the course and you can kind of see what's coming up whereas if you're really hardcore you don't know what's behind that door you just go for it if you feel like it oh like more options in your hud yeah so it could show you you know just a a one still image of what the rest of it will look like or it could show you like a 30 second commercial showing you and describing all the different uh, areas that are going to be coming up and all the different obstacles so that would be cool you know another cool thing we talked about this last time is that you know you want to progress you want to power up each time you defeat kind of the end boss here Mm -hmm. but what i was thinking is that like this idea to see the mini map ahead of you to like be able to tell what the different parts of the the hazard that you face are maybe that could be something that for easier settings is built into your hud and for more difficult settings that could be a power from another robot master oh cool so the idea is that you want to get to the end of the stage and beat the robot master that's going to get you a new power to use at the rest of the park um, we can talk about incentivizing that in a minute, but sure. the idea is that just like in the game, you want to dodge shots. You know, you, you're this is a very mobile kind of game. You want to be able to duck behind barricades, just like in laser tag. You want to be able to run past some hazards. So you do have to be aware of the people around you. Mm-hmm. Um, 
crashing into another person, that's a big chunk of health, so we de-incentivize that. When you lose all of your health through hazards or enemies or crashing into people, you have to go back to the beginning of the level, which means that you take one of like these safety, like these exits, these hatches, and remove yourself from the level so that you can start at the back of the line again. Yeah, so basically there's a hallway going adjacent to each course that will just basically lead you straight back to the beginning. So whether you've completed the course or you died, you got to go through that hallway and walk on back. And uh, we also talked about maybe including some some things like some details on this hallway. Like maybe there are posters giving you tips on how to beat the part you just died next to. Are you going to have uh, Eddie Flip Top give you a bunch of, uh, like, don't worry, try this next time. Use your ice cannon to freeze the water. You know, like things like that. Yeah, just little pointers. And it'd be cool if you could have the park guests kind of have, you know, there's a dry erase board where you can write messages to each other. Or That's so cool. I didn't think of that. I like the idea of this hallway being something not only for people who have died, but also for the victors who have already completed the stage. So maybe um, because everyone's going to be walking back towards the entrance, there's part of the hallway that's only for people who have won that level. So maybe that is where the really like next level kind of challenges are like, you know, try to try to beat this boss, you know, only using this weapon or um, there's Easter eggs hidden at these three points throughout the park. See if you can find them, that kind of thing. So there's like, additional feedback for everyone regardless of if they lost or if they won they're learning more about that park about that specific level you know what you could do is uh when you're going through the actual stage itself and you lose all your energy you have to go like through the left or right passages back but maybe once you beat the end of the level you go through like an underground passage on the way back wow you don't want to tell the other people what you just had to go through because you want that to be a surprise you want the first time you fight that robot master it should feel cool it should feel shocking it should feel really weird you want to be able to rely on your instincts and kind of plan things out you don't want to have the strategy ahead of time i like that very much that is great <laughs> so oh. let, let's finish out this stage because i want to sure. i, I, yeah, I want to yeah. flesh out one stage in particular just to really get an idea of how variable and how specific all these hazards can be Cool. I think we should have some regular enemies, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe little frog dudes, um, you know, maybe uh, maybe at an underwater segment, um, you should have like kind of attack tadpoles who sort of stay at the back of the wall and then rush you. So it's just a matter of letting them kind of lock onto your position and then dodging out of the way once they start rushing you because they can only travel in straight lines. I like that, and I like the idea of of the enemies paying attention to the the player's uh, location physically, not just what they're aiming at, but where they're physically standing. So it's like, you know, if you cross this line, then all these things are going to rush at you. Mm-hmm. That's fun. Yeah, that's really cool. Like, you could have, like, lily pads on the... Like, it could just be Frogger for a section. <laughs> right, I like that. And I, I think that using treadmills earlier, maybe, you know, they could be there to kind of impede your progress, meaning you have to walk like go against the current kind of thing so like the whole like that whole part of the level is always going to be a treadmill but it's got a different skin on it so this time it's Ah. lily pads to try to jump forward i like that maybe in a different uh when this when this like gets reskinned at the end of the season or something Mm -hmm. it'll be some other hazard that requires treadmills cool and another way you could use you could use the treadmills would be like if there's a big enemy at the end of this like narrow channel Um, maybe this treadmill like pulls you towards it really quickly and you have to try to like jump out of the way before this enemy gets you and try to go around that, that character. Oh yeah, totally. And you can absolutely use powers that you've gotten in other sections of the park in order to do that. You know how I said, like use the freeze cannon to freeze the water. That's, that's like a shortcut. If you have the right power, if you put in the time, if you've figured out how they can interact, or maybe gotten a hint from one of the other people in the park, then maybe you get around this hazard no problem and save your resources for the boss we had also talked about maybe segmenting it up to be separate rooms so each room only has uh one group of people in it at a time like i don't think that if you're a casual player that you want to go with someone who's super intense about it yeah it's just not as fun maybe you go through in waves of the same difficulty level as everyone else that might be helpful because then you're with a group of other people who are in a similar boat and so let's say you're a new player and you're kind of scared to go through this place by yourself because you've already died here a few times. Then you're waiting in the lobby because, you know, 15 more minutes, that's when your game starts. You can maybe join together with a few other people of a similar 
skill level, and then you guys can all play the same game together, like a multiplayer version. Totally, and we and we you know we want families to have a good time too. It's still a theme yeah. park, so you have a uh, so you have kind of the the Eddie Flip Top setting or the the role setting, you know the the easy setting. Yeah, the kids are still going to want to go in play the game. Maybe they want to do it with their families, you know, like if they're like eight or ten or something. The whole family goes in. They're very casual, but everybody else is also a family, so it's all like a very family friendly atmosphere. You don't have a bunch of frat boys <laughs> running through the park <laughs> if you're just trying to be there with your family. Exactly. Although those guys should definitely be here as well, because I do feel like a lot of our audience is, is grown men who would really enjoy this park <laughs> and who really love Mega Man. Well, yeah, no, and you, you should absolutely be able to play as well. Just don't, you know, just don't tackle small children at, at, while you're trying to dodge projectiles, is yeah. all I'm saying. But I do I do love that we can accommodate different types of people in this way. It's not like uh, the play place at McDonald's where it's like, you know, you have to be under like 10 to go in here or what else or whatever yeah. or else it's really weird so i mean it would be a management challenge but <laughs> i think that because there's going to be eight stages that it would be able to accommodate a large amount of people mm -hmm. and you could we, we talked about last time about having like a scheduling kind of thing where always between the eight different legs of this park there is something for beginner players going on constantly there's yeah. always something going on for pro level players so basically the the skill level of each park changes every i don't know half hour or hour or whatever to kind of jump up to the next difficulty level so yeah you can kind of schedule yourself as far as what missions you're going to go on when and how long you have to complete it before that park is shut down or switched to a different difficulty level for for a couple hours that's interesting i hadn't thought about that um yeah i, I want to get back into that in a second but let's finish out this stage sure so you get to the end of the hall you touch the door it goes like and it like goes up to the top and you go in and there's like that small corridor. You have to have that small corridor before you go into the end boss. Yes. That is so important. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then you get into the end boss. Now we're fighting Frogman. What is his stage like? It's going to be about jumping and probably lily pads, like just to be a little stereotypical about frogs. But I think that those would be really cool mechanisms where there's kind of an above water area and a below water area, the whole kind of amphibian nature. Yeah, I like that. Maybe there's like a collection of lily pads, mm -hmm. you know, just because we've already been using them. Yeah. And if you're not on the lily pad, you're not taking damage, but you do go underwater. And he's going to be able to attack you more ferociously. Maybe maybe he'll speed up, right? Cool. Because it's where he belongs. And in order to get out of that, you have to go to one of the four corners to the room where an elevator will take you back up to the top. Now, obviously, you're not actually moving in, in height. We don't want anyone to get injured by jumping from place to place. True. But it's all in your VR. So you yeah. step off a lily pad. It shows like you going underwater and now frogman is up top and now cool. he's got access to this vertical axis i really like that that's really neat and so it could basically just be like a square in each of the four corners and when you stand there it it shows like an elevator door closing although it's not actually doing that and then when it opens back up you're you're back, you're back up top. at the top yeah that's awesome i love that so it's all about watching your step because it's going to be mm -hmm. actually pretty easy to take him out if you can dodge his attacks on the lily pad level Mm -hmm. um on on the surface level yeah. now now what are some of his attacks again i'm I'm sorry to be stereotypical about frogs but um sorry to our, all our frog listeners out there yeah i mean i definitely support frogs yeah and frog rights yeah we love you guys they have long tongues there's could be a tongue attack that you could try to like jump over that and land on another lily pad maybe he you know stretches out to attack you with it just kind of like a straight shooting thing and mm -hmm. that's that's where the stage the stage already taught you to wait until he lines up his target and then jump out of the way when the projectile comes, right, with the tadpoles. Right, and then maybe his weak spot is, like, on his tongue. Like, you try to actually shoot the tongue itself. That does a bit more damage. Yeah. So the idea is wait until he lines up the target, jump to another lily pad, and then shoot the tongue as it goes past. Yeah, and, and, and a whole um, element of this is that almost all of Mega Man's attacks are projectile-based. So it's it it translates really well to the kind of hands-off laser tag kind of thing like you yeah. don't want to actually be punching enemies that's not what Mega Man would do um maybe in the anime sure but like in the video games you don't want to be up next to the enemies you want to be far away from them shooting them which makes for a much better AR slash VR experience and if he goes underwater like his tongue shoots out faster Ooh, I like that because he's more in his element you want him to be on your playing field up top yeah that's fun um what do you think once you beat 
Frogman, what would the the power that you gain from him be? Um, yeah, that's tricky. Maybe tongue shot. I mean, mm-hmm. it's kind of <laughs> it, it's kind of silly and kind of gross looking, but maybe yeah. in other stages you're going to come across like big gaps that maybe if you have tongue shot you can grappling hook across and then that'll cancel out the hazard you want I like to that and walking across I think within the 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 story maybe the the tongue grabs like a rolling bridge from the other side and pulls it across so that you can actually walk because you won't be able to actually swing Indiana Jones style so I think a lot of these power ups won't be able to actually change the the way that the player physically moves. No, you can't change the player. What you can do is have that VR like confirmation message in your headset, where in your HUD it says like uh, hazard neutralized or something like that. I like it. I think this is really cool, and it doesn't need to have super high tech components other than the augmented reality section. Like the physical structure of the park doesn't need to be that wild. You know, I mean, treadmills have been around for a long time. No, yeah. I don't think there needs to be anything really, really crazy as far as animatronics that you physically like get in a physical fight with or anything like that. I think the coolest part would be able to get like magnets in 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 the boots so that each different person, if they're standing on a hazard like in water or something, it's going to mm-hmm. be harder to move around and actually get some resistance to you walking around. I think that would be the tricky part. It would basically be adjusting the power of a magnet, which you could do with electromagnets, and then you could reverse them if you wanted to be on the moon or something. <laughs> That sounds dangerous, but sounds awesome as well. Um, maybe we could have a section of this park that, like, is 18 plus only. You have to sign a waiver um, <laughs> where we actually do have, you know, gravity-defying boots, and uh, you actually do have to go underwater to fight Frogman, and you could fall off the lily pads. Oh, that, that, that would be real special. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about kind of the attractions that aren't the stages. Yeah, because we said there's kind of like a central hub in there. And I was picturing, you know, if we've got eight stages going off, that still leaves a lot of open plaza space there in the middle. Yeah, so what I see is maybe like the the way that the eight stages work is that you're going to be in kind of this loading screen, wherein you're in the center of those eight stages. Like you're in, in kind of an octagonal room. And you're facing the screen in which you're about to go into that stage. And that screen has like this LCD display about some of the hazards that you might fight in that stage. The amount of information that that screen tells you is going to be dependent on your difficulty setting. Wow. So it's like having a big billboard that each person perceives differently. See something because... different, yeah. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> wow. And then, and then the wall opens up and you start your stage once your wave is ready, right? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, maybe it doesn't need to be octagonal, but it maybe it just goes eight different directions all all over to the right, and then to the left is the rest of the park. Okay, that could work. It could still be like an octagonal room, but the door and the little billboard thing is maybe right in the center, so then you still have all the space to the left and right of each one of those for you know, putting in shops or restaurants or whatever other kind of experiences we want to put in here. Yeah, so the, that's the other thing that I want to get to is kind of the merchandising aspect of this. Mm-hmm. Because you can go whole hog with Mega Man <laughs> merchandising. Like, in later games, he uses screws for money. So, like, if you pick up trash on the... Th- this is kind of like a self-cleaning uh, park because oh, cool. everybody he's in it is going to want to pick up, like, pick up after themselves, pick up, like, recyclables. That sounds awesome. You put them in one of the recycling bins, you get a number of bolts that you can use in order to purchase food or rides or whatever else. It's kind of like this unified currency that you get by doing the stages, by getting a high score on the stages, by protecting your health on the stages, but also by doing kind of these carnival games in the theme park. Cool. And by and also by like recycling. I really like the uh, Mega Man Battle Network games. Did you ever play those? I did not. So it's basically like um, a an RPG kind of thing. So kind of like Pokemon where you go around and you collect these little chips that are different characters. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really cool. But basically it's a, it's, I don't know, it's not even side-scrolling. It's like a strategy combat game. Um, but the overworld and the theming and the characters are really interesting from that. They kind of do their own versions of a lot of famous uh, robot masters. But I think that one of the mini games or several of the mini games might be kind of Mega Man Battle Network kinds of games where you could battle other players from the park. 
because mm. it's it's almost like a deck building kind of game where you get to really customize things. So you could have them battle against each other, and there's there's even um there is a Mega Man board game and a Mega Man card game we could also sell in the park and have people like have tournaments there too. Oh, that's super cool! I I didn't think about the Mega like the board game and card game. Like you could have kind of like a rec room where you take off your helmet and you just play. Like it's a tavern in a D and D game. Like you're not adventuring. I like that. You're just here to chill but you're chilling with other adventurers so you can still have a good time. And I like your idea of doing a one-on-one battle too because Mm -hmm. then you can key up your VR to the other person's VR um, where you can really show off like kind of the, you can like sort of customize your outfit and maybe they they think that you look super cool in your outfit and that idea, you know, get some fashion souls in there. (laughs) But like if you've got your tongue shot and they've got like scrap shot, now like maybe you bring in one weapon, Mm -hmm. right? And maybe... You and there are, um, and in the arena there are going to also be hazards depending on like a randomizer. So you're going to some stage where you fight this other dude. He's got a power. You've got a power, and it's all about using your power to oh. kind of outmaneuver him. So it's like a one-on-one uh, laser tag duel with custom weapons. Yes, that is amazing. And you could even do bigger matches where it's, you know, 4 on 4 kind of stuff, like almost getting into more traditional laser tag right. but where everyone has their own Mega Man power. Cuz that's why why I thought of this uh that's why I thought of this kind of Mega Man themed laser tag in the first place was cuz I had recently gone to a laser tag thing mm-hmm. and they had all these power-ups that you could find on the walls where like you'd shoot it and then suddenly, oh, you get like a radar jammer or yeah. you know, a rapid fire mode. And I'm like, right. well, that, there's so much more you can do here. Seriously. Especially with augmented reality. If you put, yeah, if you put AR into the mix, now you've got this one guy with scrap shot, he's going to want to get in close and kind of spray and pray. You've mm-hmm. got this one guy with tongue shot, he's going to want to keep his distance and can use the utility of it to get around hazards so he can do that. And now it's sort of like a chess match. That's so fun. And like maybe <laughs> someone's got like a ricochet kind of weapon that can bounce off yeah. of surfaces and ugh. Dude, there's so much <laughs> there's so much potential here i think that's so fun and I, I love the idea you brought up of the the kind of tavern of like a more relaxing kind of place and maybe it has um you know arcade games in there as well right because um, well I've, we've been talking a lot about kind of appealing to the stereotypical like early 20 something or teenager have a good rowdy time with your buds kind of demographic but, <laughs> right but l- let's also consider what happens if a family wants to go here? What kind of enjoyment can they have? Maybe they only really want to do one stage just to test it out, and then they want to be in the rest of the park. What else do they do? Is this kind of board game or card game room? It's all Mega Man themed. You can definitely get some marketing in on that. You'll also have all of the kind of uh, the worker, the people who work at the park, like the staff, you know, and they can be selling things or they can be um, moderating carnival games. Mm -hmm. of the sort um but they would also kind of have robot skins on them right so they would look like robot workers yeah that's so fun so like you know all of the guests kind of look like mega man type of characters whereas the rest of them look like the robots the robot populace oh that's great (laughs) because yeah the, the majority of characters in the mega man universe are robots the world of Mega Man is one where humanity has fallen, so like they become kind of the resistance, and everything else is a bunch of you know war robots. So it makes sense that like everyone you meet would be a robot here, right? Because it's it's already kind of crowded with humans because of the number of people who are attending the park. So you need to make sure there's a lot of robots in this park. Well, I mean, you, the other people also can look like robots if you want them to. Oh, that's true. I guess <laughs> you could kind of customize your own your avatar, like your skin. Um, not only with choosing different colors and stuff, but you could look like some other kind of robot. You don't have to have the classic Mega Man helmet. That's true. No, you can have like a template. You can have like a Mega Man template. Like this. So this is like one of the things that you do right after you buy your ticket is you go to like, uh, you go to, you go to processing, (laughs) like where, where you're building your Mega Man outfit that you're going to use through the whole park. And that's what everyone else is going to see, even though you're not actually physically changing anything, you know? So like you can just sit at uh you can just sit at kind of a monitor and and mix and match things that you want to put on your outfit and that's what's going to show up in everyone's ar Uh, and i also love the idea of finding collectibles throughout the park and the levels as well that allow you to kind of customize additional things not only not like actual gameplay changes as far as the the power-ups that you find but something that's just cosmetic where you could have that really sweet scarf that proto man has or like get really (laughs) long hair like zero that'd be awesome 
And that's a really fun idea. Like just like these little extra things that if you happen to notice them make you look cooler. Oh my god. Um have you you know the cover art for Mega Man One and Mega Man Two that just terrible painting oh god style. i love those if you could get a costume that looks like that which just looks like someone's first pass at making a Mega Man cosplay yeah um, it looks like robocop it it's yeah seriously it kind of does it looks like mega man not like mega anime boy which is all the rest of them maybe there's um a, a certain like shop like maybe you don't actually pay for stuff here but where you can get like cosmetic changes and stuff so instead of having like a dressing room like you physically step onto this five by five rectangle or square i guess because it's the same measurement in both directions but anyway you step on it and suddenly you look like roll like it just changes your avatar instantly and you can kind of think about like hey do i like the way this looks you know do i want to buy any of these pieces um basically you could try on a full outfit by just stepping on a thing and the the everyone's computer system registering that you are within this area where you are going to look like Gutsman now. You can also like uh, choose from maybe different loadouts. Mm-hmm. Like maybe your shots do more damage, but you have less health and that's like a proto man uh-huh. build or something like that or a Gutsman's build. So you're going through a stage and you're going to be like fighting alongside a couple other people. Maybe one of them looks like roll to you and it's like, oh, she's going to stay in the back and she's got like really good utility and, and, and really good like auto targeting or something like that. And here's a here's here's a Mega Man. He's probably going to stay near the center. I can count on him to sort of watch my back as I go through the front. Are you imagining these being real people, like your actual people you're traveling with? Yeah. Or are these because they could be just fully virtual. Characters. That's true. You you can actually also have your own team, even if you're just by yourself. Yeah. So you could like hire some you know additional help if you can't beat this level by yourself. <gasps> that could also be the in-game <laughs> currency. Whoa! Yes, that That'd is be pretty great. cool. And then that's a way we could incorporate some of the other, like, maybe robot masters who aren't currently in season, which we haven't really talked about that quite yet. But we only have room for eight robot master stages at a time. But It would be blasphemous to have more than eight. It really would. It it would mess things up. But we need to have... There's so many other great characters. So many of those wouldn't be able to be in season all the time. So maybe we could include them as, like, they could be helping you during this one stage. You could kind of hire them to to help you out like and if you like kind of the way they function then maybe you want to come back and fight them for real once once they cycle in yeah so that you can get their weapon That's so you can cool. get their weapon right yeah yeah so we're think we're talking about every season changing out you know one or two of these robot master stages or maybe changing all of them yeah i think that you could do this pretty easily because all of this is the thing is everything is just a skin that you throw over everything maybe you have to program like how a new weapon works but beyond that everything else is just kind of a uh Everything is just kind of a programming challenge, so it would be pretty easy to have new features. You just cycle out old stages. Yeah, it's basically just doing an update for a video game. You know, you just change. There's a few new levels. A few of the old ones aren't available right now. Um, And what about this idea? If if I got a one of the powers from like the robot masters from the the day the park first opened, do I still get to bring that power back with me five years later when I go back to the park, or is that power out of date because that robot master is not in season? I do like the idea of kind of repeat customers getting uh, getting more more bang for their buck and getting being incentivized to come back. I think that every so often it should reset. So like maybe annually you're going to start from zero, but it, you know through that year you get to keep the powers that you have accrued, or maybe just through the season. Like maybe if you, if you have like a season pass, right? Mm-hmm. Then you get to keep the powers. Ooh, good idea. Um, yeah. And then maybe, like, we could have an anniversary week once a year where every power ever is available and, like, things are just totally crazy. And instead of um, just changing the stage every three months, it's, like, every hour all eight change, all eight of them change out. We just, like, go totally bananas because it's, like, we already have all the the infrastructure and all the graphics already made and all the attack patterns. So we're just going to swap them all out like madmen for, you know, this 48-hour period or whatever. You know, what you could also do is that we, we kind of uh, introduced this PvP aspect of it earlier. Um, we could have, during those bonanzas, we could have, like, a tournament. Yeah. Where, like, a bunch of people who have gotten fairly high scores in the actual stages can compete against each other. That's uh, cool. In, in this sort of tournament structure. And so, like, you'd have additional seating for that. And, you know, you'd be able to... You'd be able to bet on people depending on what weapon they brought in, which is like something that you do in a Mega Man game. You're like, well, I have this weapon. Would it be good against this other weapon? Yeah, true. So 
you know, you'd be able to kind of like bet the in-universe currency, the 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 bolts or whatever. Bolts, yeah, I like that a lot because you know you're going to be pretty tired. Like laser tag is a tiring thing, especially mm-hmm. if you play more than one game in a row. So you got to have some sit down activities as well, you know. And, yeah. You know the arcade, playing board games, eating some food, watching some live matches. That'd all be awesome. You can also do like regular carnival games. Like uh, you can do like ski balls and like the one where you shoot a bunch of water into that uh, into mm-hmm. the, that thing's mouth and it goes to the top and rings a bell or whatever. Yeah. Whatever the hell that is called. Skinning those to be Mega Man would be so awesome. Easy. Be, yeah, super easy and super <laughs> cool. That's <sighs> a great thing. You can take a bunch of old you know theme park activities and just reskin them to look all mega mm-hmm. that's all you gotta do and mega is an aesthetic that really works on me so that's all i <laughs> like at its core that's all i really need for a theme park the laser tag is just the icing on the cake what do you think about the storyline of this park is there is there an introduction story of like why all this madness is happening or is it just kind of a general the same story every time you go you know humanity is fallen it's the year 20 xx or whatever <laughs> um, i think that you want to go with the classic humanity has fallen it's the year 20 xx because uh-huh. like everybody is familiar with that who knows mega man and that's mm-hmm. gonna really hit them right in the nostalgic land um, i like that and you, you don't need to add new story as much as a lot of the other theme parks you kind of need a reason for why all this is happening it's like this is what every mega man game already is so it's just another one of those like you already know the story. Just come on in and experience it. What you could also do so that it doesn't feel like non-canonical is frame it all as kind of like a training simulation. If we are going with like the Proto Man <laughs> kind of storyline where, <laughs> where Proto Man attempted his mes- mission and kind of like failed and was corrupted and then Mega Man attempted his mission and was successful. So now for this like third iteration, it's all of these people going through this training program and hopefully some of them will have what it takes to right. become the next hero. Dr. Light created Mega Man. He could only do it once. The plan, the blueprints were destroyed. There's no other Mega Man. So what do we do? We go from the opposite angle. Rather than have the robot oh. with with the mind of a man, we take a man and give him the body of a robot. Oh, dude, that's so, great. This is like his plan B. He's like, okay, I can't create any more Mega Man, but we need more soldiers. The Resistance is going to be trained to act like Mega Man because that's yeah. the best we can do. The Resistance is growing and... Um, that's really cool because then it's like you know the the story of this park year to year is the story of of turning the tide in this war. I think that sounds awesome. And and so because it's AR and you're going through a stage, you can look to your right and you can see Mega Man fighting the same things you are, and maybe he's like showing you kind of like some moves that you can use or some techniques. If we're picturing the each stage is kind of being a straight hallway um, kind of thing at the beginning. Maybe the one wall, like your right wall, always has um, you know characters from the Mega Man universe running alongside you, kind of giving you tutorial type stuff if you're a low level player. So mm-hmm. it's like if you're ever confused about what to do, always look to the right, and there's your kind of tutorial screen. It's like that whole wall of the course. You know, the story could even get harsher depending on your difficulty setting. Oh, I like that a lot. So, like, you go in and you're a role or whatever. You've got Mega Man. He's kind of your big brother. He's kind of helping you out. You go in as a proto-man. Mega Man is dead. You are all (laughs) that is left. You you are nothing. And you don't get him to help at all. I mean, with the the augmented reality and each person being kind of living their own story it's so different than a traditional theme park where everyone's looking at the same thing it's completely uh customizable for the individual there's no other experience like that even video games you play as the same character as everyone else even if your character looks a little different it's the exact same story for everyone we have not uh discussed the name of the park yet do you have any ideas for a name of of a Mega Man theme park with these eight different levels branching off and the whole like plaza of different things to do that aren't running around shooting stuff with lasers. I know that last time we kind of had this idea of calling it Mega Man Nexus, both because of the way that the stages were arranged and also because the ner- narrative behind it was that you were kind of communicating with other Mega Men throughout the dimensions. Right. And that's not necessarily the case this time. Now it's more of Dr. Light's next phase of his plan, which is to bring in humans and train them and see if any of them can can live up to kind of the Mega Man moniker, the Mega Man mission. Right. So what I, I think what we want to do is have Mega Man colon and then some computer word like upgrade. Ooh, okay. 
you know, kind of get the idea that, okay, you're humans, you're just humans, we're going to make you better than. We're right. going to $6 million, million dollar man you guys, and here's your training simulation, <laughs> and you're the last hope of humanity is to make you better than men, to kind of Iron Man you all out. I love that. I think upgrade makes a lot of sense because it's supposed to be kind of an upgrade on the Mega Man formula as well. It's like That's you know, true. It's got that double meaning. Yeah. It upgrades the part cast and it upgrades Mega Man. I'm just not even gonna try to think of anything better because I love that name. That's better than Mega Man Nexus too, which I was really in love with Mega Man Nexus at the time. I'm also in love with that. <laughs> yeah, but I think Mega Man Upgrade is really cool. It doesn't necessarily feel as like the name doesn't evoke a place quite as much as Mega Man Nexus to me. But mm-hmm. I think that I would get used to it, knowing that that is the Mega Man theme park. And because of the, the nature of the AR, um, all of this is going to update every so often, and so that, that also connects with that. All right, is there anything else you would like to add to our park while we're here? I think like a shooting gallery that is also a roller coaster would be really cool. I talk about this on an upcoming episode, but there's a level in um, Super Mario Sunshine where you're on a roller coaster. And- yeah, and you're firing rockets at a Mecha Bowser. Dude, you're a hell at your boy. I know exactly what you're talking about. Hell <laughs> at your boy. Um, but yeah, that that was always such a cool level to me. And I'm like, why aren't all theme parks like this? Like, make me look at something and try to shoot something while I'm doing these like high thrills maneuvers. The one that uh, kind of sticks out for me is the Final Fantasy VII. Uh, you remember the Golden Chocobo, or not the Golden Chocobo, the Wonder Square? Uh, what's it called? The Golden Saucer. The gambling uh, yeah. casino you place. And yeah. they have that one square called the Speed Square where you just go on a roller coaster that makes you bunch of, shoot a bunch of a bunch of balloons and stuff as you as you go past. I don't remember this. It's like an actual attraction that you go on? Yeah, d- dude, go huh. look it up because it's, it's exactly what I'm thinking. That sounds super cool. Kind of having a whole section of the of the amusement park that is a bunch of like attractions that you can use the AR for that are not actually stages would be would be a lot of fun. There was something else I really wanted to add, which was when you do run out of energy in one of the uh, stages, like you die, it has to like project out those circles going in every directions and like play the Mega Man like dying sound effect because I just I really love that for some reason. That would be great. Oh. Yeah. So good. Oh, yeah. And then also, I would like to include some kind of museum. I don't know if this is a in-canon museum, which is like Dr. Wily's, uh, you know, workshop kind of thing. Ooh, Wily's workshop. There could be like an Epcot-esque part of that sort of Dr. Light bringing you up to speed. And it could be like a person with the Dr. Light skin on, like a, almost like a uh, a walking hallway of like all of his earlier work. And then, and then you get to the... Uh, augmented reality section of it where he actually like explains how the park actually functions and he does it in terms of like you know this is the only way that we could get um young people to train in simulated reality uh, actually and i think the parents would really be really interested in that technology aspect just like how are they actually doing this these are not the theme parks i remember as a kid and like somebody could explain to you the technology of it while at the same time all the kids who are there are like oh this is also cool like i'm learning how they're trying to simulate my training i think that's amazing and also i just thought of another cool ride that could be potentially part of this like epcot type of deal where they show you kind of how society has evolved and like what the current state of things is like a a ride going through like um maybe like a neighborhood like you can kind of see how the human rebellion is living and then you can go through like the city and like see a glimpse into like robot life and what the the city would be that would be a really good thing for like like a like a oral history like kind of movie presentation of uh of the Mega Man universe that would be really good for one of those like sitting roller coaster like those uh stationary roller coasters do you know what i'm talking yeah, about yeah exactly with with uh maybe like a 4D ride kind of thing where it like kind of tilts your seat a little bit so it's yeah. a little bit like a roller coaster but it's really just like a movie yeah and you like can look around you and uh and if it's if it's just your headset that you're like sitting in the thing oh, and you're yeah. and you're looking through your headset at it, then you know the story can change from week to week. It doesn't got to be the same thing. I love that they have their headsets on the whole time because that's like the most um, the like hardest part about designing stuff for VR is to like have the person put their headset on. Like it's so it so breaks the immersion of it. Whereas if you already have your helmet on, then it, it's like it integrates so well with like what else you're doing with your whole day at that park. Well, there's also an in-universe reason to keep your helmet on, and when you take it off, of course the simulation goes away because this is all the training facility. Exactly. I, I love that. And and then you don't have to get into like the weird story 
parts of like why are there so many of us like i don't know i feel like we've covered our bases as far as why this is happening this is a simulation that's why you're not actually dying when you lose you know you just go to the hallway and walk back to the the start again and you know these these explanations don't need to be airtight like if you need an explanation there it is and if you don't you're at a theme park just enjoy yourself exactly there's one other aspect i was thinking about which is like you know, this AR technology, it's its being used by the developers to kind of create this environment for you. But, uh, you know, how you said that you can also kind of customize how you look to everyone else? Yeah. You can, we can push that even farther and put the hands in the power of the, of the players. And, uh, you know, maybe you have like an experimental stage that you can customize and then re- try to run through or have other people run through. And hey, maybe that's part of the Epcot areas. Like, this is how we design our levels. Like, yeah. you can try to, you know, kind of... Um... Super Mario Maker style, try to design your own course using our assets here, and we'll see if it, if it's something that you enjoy playing. And then maybe there's like a production wing in the back, like a fake production wing that just shows a bunch of the robots that will be used in the later stages. You can see them being assembled. It's all just like AR stuff. There's not actually assembly going on, but you can see it going on. You know, like that kind of integration into this narrative. I love, I loved your idea for like a, a Doctor Light teaching you museum. Yeah, I, I'm so into that. Um, (laughs) that's really fun. I really love like Epcot and if it was themed, oh, you know, more strongly themed, I think that'd be really amazing. I think this is a really cool, cool idea. And I like that it's kind of a training institute. So you're supposed to start out not knowing really everything. And then by the time you leave, you should be kind of a pro. And then if you come back again, you'll be even better and have more weapons in your arsenal as well. Just like Mega Man through the course of one of his games. I think that's awesome. And you can see who's kind of been through it before, because you mentioned that there are, like, pickups that you can get that change your costume, like mm-hmm. that scarf. Yes. Um, so you know, you can tell who's been through it a few times. Maybe you can ask them for advice. That's great. Yeah, that's really cool. And maybe, you know, um, because this is all AR, you could have each um, character's, like, username and their level above their head if you wanted to, like an MMO kind of thing. Or when you just look at them... Uh, you know, it has like a little line coming in from the side of your display and it points to them. And then over on the side, you see some details about them. Well, you and I share many passions, I would say, because, well, you do your own show called, called the Carton Cast, which I absolutely adore. And we both love animation and dissecting Thank stuff you. and recording conversations and putting them on the Internet for strangers to listen to. Um, yes, I, I should say so. <laughs> So yeah, listener, please listen to the Carton Cast if you haven't already. It's a fantastic show. It's like Cartoon Cast, but without one of the O's. It's a podcast that my brother and I run, um, and it's part of the Fancy Bat collaboration, which is kind of still being built, but the podcast is alive and well. It's all about old cartoons and what Zane and I think of them as we go back and kind of pick through them with a fine-tooth comb as adults. Uh, It's super fun. Andrew, you were on an episode. Mm -hmm. Uh, We'd love to have you for another one. Uh, The Johnny Quest one was really entertaining. It was. That was a fun episode. I I, I love animation. So, um, yeah, if you can't tell, this podcast covers a lot of cartoons as well. It's it's just cartoons are so cool, and especially analyzing them as adults, you get all the additional, you know, flavors. It's, It's like tasting all those childhood cereals and realizing maybe they weren't that good. Thank you very much for being on. Thank you, listener, for your time. And go listen to the Cartoncast if you want something else to listen to. It's it's a good time. Thank you for listening to episode 13 of Amusement Sparks. If you could do me a favor, I would love it if you would join us on social media. We now have an Instagram and Twitter account, which are brand new, and then our classic Facebook and Reddit pages listener feedback is super super crucial to me so anything that you guys have out there um you know ideas for upcoming parks or contributions to existing parks would be amazing it's definitely all about showing that anyone can do this so you know if you can listen to this show and it engages you why not go that extra step and come up with a new idea for a new park and join in the conversation let's do it i would also like to recommend another podcast called empowered which is something that I do with Ben and Zane of the Carton Cast, and we also have other guests on there as well. But we just take a random superpower and then just kind of talk about it and riff on it and uh, dissect it for like five to ten minutes. So it's a really quick show. Um, it's not quite as family-friendly as this program, but it's, it's pretty awesome stuff. I would definitely recommend checking that out. Our next episode will be out in three weeks, and it features Nathan Capister of Silk Radio, Fair Enough, and Fair Point, and we'll be talking about Nickelodeon. See you then.